Chapter 171 Something wrong with Qin Guang there was nothing else in the dresser. After closing the door, Chen Gu snapped a few pictures of the dresser. There are four blood-red nails on the four corners of the dresser, and every gap was sealed with clear cellophane. The fact that the cupboard could be preserved in the third sick hall for so long has got to do with this unique setting. Chen Gu tried to yank the nail out, but he failed after giving it a try. The four nails were stuck deep into the corners, it was as if they were already joined to the dresser. There is something unique about these four nails. I should return in the morning to pull them out. Chen Gu had stayed for far too long inside the director's office, so he had no idea what was happening outside. When he stepped out from the resting area, the white cat jumped onto his shoulder and refused to get down no matter what. Chen Gu nudged himself carefully toward the office door. He did not dare to go out directly, afraid that the nurse or the twisted face was hiding at the corner to ambush him. With the hammer raised, Chen Gu leaned against the door to listen for weird noises coming from outside. Ten seconds passed, and he did hear something weird. The sound of doors opening and closing reverberated down the corridor, like someone was inspecting the rooms one by one. Chen Gu pushed the office door slightly, and in the corridor that seemed to reach into the endless dark, there was something swaying in the inky darkness. The shadow gradually gathered its shape as it flitted in and out of the rooms. That's a white nurse's outfit. Is she looking for her notebook? Chen Gu gripped the hammer. He was considering whether to face the nurse head on or temporarily retreat. The nurse's body was very twisted, and this caused her to have a staggering gait since she could barely maintain her balance. Even so, she was moving at a quick speed. Viewed from afar, it was quite scary. She appeared to have discovered me on the third floor. If not for the opportune sound of a door opening, we would have been involved in an altercation. Keeping her around means another dangerous element for me to worry about. In that case, I should use the notebook as bait and take care of her while I still have the element of surprise. Chen Gu was as calm as he could be. He was coming up with the solution that was the most beneficial to him. The director's office is large. Even if I fail to kill her with one hit, there's enough space for me to continue the aggression. It's also the perfect opportunity to see whether the cleaver is useful against these things. Chen Gu placed the notebook before the dresser, put away the letters, and climbed into the dresser to hide with the cat. He adjusted himself until he found a comfortable position. After several minutes, the door to the office was opened. The nurse saw the notebook easily. However, she did not rush in to take it immediately. She seemed to be cautious of the dresser. She hesitated for quite some time before staggering into the room. Chin Ji's eyes caught the nurse's every movement. When she bent down to take the notebook, Chin Gu saw his opportunity, blasted the door open and swung the hammer right at the nurse. The hammer fell on the nurse, and her already misshapen body became even more distorted. Not giving her a chance to recover, Chin Gu grabbed the cleaver from his backpack. The red cloth fell to the ground as Chen Gu stuck the blade into the nurse's outfit. There was a sharp sound beside his ears. The nurse's clothes were split open, and even though there was no blood, it was clear that a part of the nurse's body had gone missing. This cleaver is usable. The nurse's dead face changed. It was filled with pain and anger. She opened her jaws wide to bite at Chen Ji's face, shrieking. Chen Gu raised the cleaver to defend himself, but he had underestimated the nurse's aggression level. This thing was different from a normal human being. Even though the cleaver struck her body, her movement did not slow, if anything, she moved faster. The cleaver dealt some damage to the nurse, but the nurse also got close to her target. Her ugly face was inches away. Chen Gu was seconds away from certain death. At that moment, the white cat on his shoulder suddenly jumped onto the nurse's face. The stray cat was vicious. The nurse's attack was halted, and she changed target to bite at Chin Ji's arm. The nurse was very aggressive. Chin Gu weaved left and right to evade her attacks. There was a cling on his wrist like something had fallen off. He did not pay the sound any attention. He focused fully on doing damage to the nurse's body using the cleaver. Even though there was no blood, 
the nurse's size was visibly shrinking, and her form started to waver. After who knew how many cuts, the nurse completely disappeared, and the torn-up nurse's outfit fell to the floor. It's over. Before he could celebrate, there was commotion coming from the corridor. Something seemed to be heading his way, and the number of new pursuers sounded to be quite high. Can't stay here any longer. I'll be dead if I'm surrounded here. Chin Gu grabbed his backpack, and holding the cleaver and hammer on each hand, he made a hasty retreat. He ran until he reached the staircase. He was about to catch his breath when the phone in his pocket vibrated. Mission success alert? Chin Gu saw the message, and he felt cheated. The vibration was a call from Lu Dao. I'll need to remind them not to call me during my live stream. This might be the cause of my death if I'm not careful. Chin Gu answered the call with a whisper. I'm hanging up if there's nothing important. Quick look at your live stream room. Lu Dao sounded quite excited. Huh? Chin Gu clicked his page open, and he got quite a shock when he saw the number. His viewer count had shot up to 300,000. And the number was still climbing. It would pass 400,000 in just a few minutes. What's going on? Is something wrong with the platform? Seeing the rising number, Chin Gu decided to change the live stream's name to the address of his haunted house and added an explanation in the information box. Nothing's wrong with the platform, but something's definitely wrong with Qin Guang. After entering a classroom in Mu Yang High School, his visual suddenly turned black. No one knows what happened. I initially thought this was some kind of special effect, but the screen stayed black for as long as 25 minutes. For a professional live stream, even 5 minutes without an image is a tragedy. This can only mean one thing, some kind of accident must have happened to his team. The more he said, the more excited he got. This is a gift from the heavens. The entire platform planned to promote a supernatural live stream because of him, but most of the viewers only got a black screen. They went to search for similar content, and since only the two of you are doing this, and the key point being that your live stream content and quality are much higher than his, most of the viewers came and never left. After hearing the cause and effect from Lu Dao, based on the trajectory of the viewership so far, getting to 500,000 was not impossible, and that was a dream for a newbie host like Chin Gu. Chapter 172 the monster behind the door a rocket rise in popularity was something that Chin Gu did not expect. I've already given Qin Guang the warning, but he refused to listen, so I can't be blamed. Thankfully, Mu Yang High School isn't that dangerous, and the ghosts there aren't evil, so he should be fine. Chin Gu still felt like he was a kind person. Hopefully, he'll speedily recover and will think twice before plagiarizing other people's content again. Chin Gu made use of this opportunity to promote his haunted house. He believed that many viewers would remember the name of Western Jiujiang's House of Horrors from this live stream. Popularity was like rising bread, in the foreseeable future, there should be a continuous stream of viewers who would come to pay him a visit. Chin Gu, I'll need to talk to you about drafting a new contract. Also, I have a question to ask. Lu Dao did not hang up. He was under a lot of pressure as well. You have arranged this entire live stream, right? The whole setting is controlled and operated by the team at your haunted house? Lu Dao did not know that much about Chin Gu even though they were partners. He knew that Chin Gu owned a haunted house, so it was not uncommon for the boss to know professional actors and have the ability to design the most authentic scary experience. For someone who did not believe in the occult, he had to explain the situation with logic when he came across supernatural incidents. I suppose so. Chin Gu gave a vague answer. He did have a team back at the haunted house, but other than Su Wan, the rest of the cast could not be revealed. I knew you are not in there alone. Lu Dao sighed. Earlier, the camera on your wrist fell. After you ran out, the camera on the floor suddenly started to move, and after Sister Lee saw it, she thought an actual ghost had arrived. What? Chin Gu whipped his head to look at his wrist. Indeed, the camera had fallen, probably when he was tussling with the nurse. Look, it's moving again. Chin Gu silenced the chat log and turned to look at the video on the right-hand corner. 
The video corresponded to the wrist camera. The video was moving forward, and the camera seemed to be hanging on the nurse's outfit. It was moving toward Chen Gu. It's still alive after the punishment I put her through? Is it due to the unique environment? Lu Dao did not know how serious it was and gave Chen Gu some serious advice. You'd better contact your friend and tell him to not appear before the camera. This will give the viewers a greater sense of anticipation. What anticipation? After hanging up, Chen Gu ran up the stairs immediately. The live stream showed two different camera angles, and one was running away from the other. This was something new for the viewers and for Chen Gu as well. He rushed into the third floor corridor. After running a few feet, Chen Gu lowered his head to glance at his phone. He saw his back. She has caught up to me. Without a way to deal with the nurse permanently, Chen Gu ran into the staircase and down back to the second floor. After losing the nurse, he changed his direction and flew down to the first floor. The nurse was chasing after him on instinct. After losing Chen Gu, she repeated her action of inspecting every room. The nurse is different from the mirror monster, she has no will. It is as if she has melded herself with the environment. After the nurse left, Chen Gu climbed out of his hiding spot. This level was where everything started. The stench is now even thicker. The corridor of the first floor was different from other floors. In the cracks on the ground, there was things that looked like worms wiggling. There were faded red bruises on the walls, and after peeling a section of the wall off, Chen Gu discovered that the red had seeped into the wall. It felt like he was examining the skin of a living person. The director's letters mentioned something similar, but he said that the weird changes were limited to the walls adjacent to room 3. There were 10 rooms on the first floor, corresponding to the 10 patients. Chen Gu nudged closer to the door nearest to him. The door to room 10 was made of steel. Instead of a sick room, it looked more like a prison. Chen Gu tried many ways, but the door did not even budge. The quality is good. Even after so many years, there are no signs of it getting loose. The patient in room 10 was known as the devil. Even though Dr. Gao said that the patient probably would have died from his disease already, there were always exceptions to the rule. That night, Chen Gu had met quite a few patients from the third sick hall already, perhaps patient number 10 was still alive. Room 8 and 9 were also equipped with steel doors. Chen Gu could not open them without creating a huge commotion. It was no time for sightseeing, so Chen Gu rushed to room 3. The wall was peeling off and something that looked like blood was leaking from inside the walls. The dolls were half exposed from underneath the mattresses. It felt like they would reach out to grab his legs at any moment. Every corner of the corridor was filled with bruises, and when Chen Gu touched it, lines that looked suspiciously like blood vessels appeared. It was a weird feeling, it felt like it was the building itself that was bleeding. The stench in the air was so thick that it had gotten uncomfortably pungent. Suppressing the rising nausea, Chen Gu walked toward room 3. When he was close enough, he finally saw the door. It was a door that was completely dyed red with blood. It was half open, and there was a no-entry sign hanging on the door knob. This is the door that has ruined this hospital. It was not until when he saw the door that it dawned on him how dangerous his situation was. Chen Gu moved his legs forcibly forward, the cleaver and hammer in his hands giving him zero security. Every cell in his body was screaming for him to leave, but there was also a voice at the back of his brain calling him to move forward, hurrying him. With the hair on his body standing up, Chen Gu finally stopped at the door of room 3. In the dark corridor, a door sat quietly amid the blood-dyed walls. It was like the heart of the third sick hall, and everything revolved around it. Will this happen to the door in my haunted house if I leave it be? Chen Gu looked into room 3 through the gap. The ceiling, walls, bed, everything Chen Gu could see was red. Even though it was just a door, it was the separation between two drastically different worlds. He reached out to touch the door, hoping to close it. However, when he moved the door, a familiar noise entered his ears. He had heard this noise at the haunted house before. It was the sound of something heavy being dragged. 
Chapter 173, Wake Him Up When He Heard This Sound, Chen Gu did not hesitate and slammed the door closed. With his hand around the lock, a chill snuck into his palm and spread throughout his body. He froze outside the door and focused his attention on locating the source of the noise. It definitely came from inside the door, but I'm unable to ascertain which direction. The image of a masked monster dragging a body down the corridor appeared in Chen Ji's mind. The sound drew closer until it suddenly stopped. Chin Ji's muscles were tensed. It was a curious feeling. The door before him was like a mirror. The two worlds reflected each other, and the monster was standing where Chin Gu was. There was just a door between them, and neither party dared do anything rash. Eerie winds blew down the corridor. For minutes later, there was the sound of a door opening coming from the second floor. The female nurse seemed to have caught up to him. Things were not looking good for Chen Gu. The nurse was coming, but he was caught in a situation where he could not move an inch. The monster on the other side of the door had sensed probably him. If he made any abrupt movements, the monster might come out from the door. This was a silent competition. The monster inside the door was hesitating. Outside the door, Chen Gu did not have a plan to face the monster yet. His biggest goal then was to find something to temporarily close the door and survive the night at the hospital. The nurse, who had finished inspecting the third and second floors, finally arrived at the first floor. The nurse seemed to have been a vengeful person when she was alive because when she saw Chen Gu, she started running toward him in her tipsy gait. In a dark hall within an enclosed sick hall, a madwoman in a tattered nurse outfit was charging at him, this was a scary scene indeed. Chin Ji's arms were covered in green veins, and he looked at the encroaching nurse out of the corner of his eyes. I've already given you the notebook, so why are you still chasing me? If this was another place and another time, Chin Gu would not have panicked, but the monster inside the door had put him under too much pressure. He had heard the voice and had never seen the monster behind the door, and the fear of the unknown was always the biggest. The nurse was relentless. With her claws lashing, she soon arrived within ten meters of Chin Gu. The wounds caused by the cleaver had recovered, and the nurse's misshapen body had solidified plenty. Chin Gu could even see the camera hanging on the nurse's lapel. Don't push it. When the nurse was five meters from Chin Gu, he made a quick decision. Between the two, he picked the weaker one. He would deal with the nurse first before taking on the thing inside the door. Chin Gu slowly pulled his hands back from the door, and when the nurse was close enough, Chin Gu rammed into her with a speed that was faster than she was. The hammer swung freely, and Chin Gu assaulted the nurse like he was a crazed person. In reality, other than being a little bit hard to kill, the nurse was not that powerful. When the cleaver cut into the woman's body, Chin Gu did not continue his aggression. He knew that the bigger threat came from behind him. While Chen Gu and the nurse were caught in the altercation, the door to room 3 started to bleed. Something that looked like blood slid down the door before disappearing when it hit the ground. A powerful force was nudging the door open from the inside. The door creaked as it slowly opened. The thing is coming out. Those few seconds were not enough to fully deal with the nurse, and Chen Gu found himself caught between a rock and a hard place. The nurse seemed to hate him a lot as she curled her twisted body around him, trying to constrict him like a boa. With a bigger threat behind him, Chen Gu steeled his heart. He struggled loose from the nurse and whacked the nurse heavily on her back. The hammer given by the black phone had a debilitative effect on ghosts, and this was proven when the hammer landed on the nurse's body. Chen Gu hit the nurse on the same spot, and the nurse got tossed forward, landing between Chen Gu and the blood door. The door was already half open, and something was coming out. This is not where you belong. Chin Gu carried on his attack. The normal method could not kill the nurse, so he tried the only method available, he planned to force the nurse into the blood door and perhaps that might close the door. Things went smoother and much scarier than Chin Gu anticipated. When the nurse neared the door, a hairy hand reached out from the half-open door. The hand reached for the location Chen Gu was standing at earlier. During his fight with the nurse, Chen Gu had purposely traded his original position with the nurse. 
The palm grabbed the nurse and powerfully yanked backwards. The nurse's face was twisted, and she barely had the chance to struggle before she was pulled into the door. Seeing this, Chen Gu ran forward and slammed the door shut. He put all his weight against the door to block it from opening. Bang! There was slamming from behind the door. Chen Gu had experienced a similar thing at his haunted house, but the difference was, the door at the haunted house only existed for a minute, but the one at the hospital might persist until dawn. Bang! Something slammed into the door heavily. It caused Chen Ji's back to go numb. Just what kind of monster is behind the door? Why is it so powerful? He did not know the method to close the door, and there was nothing around to help him block the entrance. The worst thing was that the door slamming might attract more monsters. This door has to be closed, even if just temporarily. If not, I might not be able to survive to see the sun rise tomorrow morning. Chin Gu forced himself to calm down. With his back to the door, he pulled out his phone to call Dr. Gao. Please pick up. It was answered after four rings. Dr. Gao's voice drifted through the phone. Chin Gu. Probably due to a signal problem, Dr. Gao's voice came intermittently, and this only made Chin Gu feel more nervous. Dr. Gao, get me Men Nan. I have an emergency. He is still hospitalized, what do you want from him? It's a life and death situation. He was born at a mental hospital, and the hidden third persona is the real Men Nan, Chin Gu said urgently. While Dr. Gao was confused by what he had said, from Chin Ji's hurried tone, he knew the gravity of the situation. I'll drive to the hospital now. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Don't hang up, tell me if you need anything. I might not survive 20 minutes. Chin Ji's back was sore, and the few sick rooms next to him had started to make weird noises. Dr. Gao, you have to help me invoke the youngest persona inside Men Nan. Chapter 174 the monster's weakness, the youngest persona? Men Nan's third person is very well secluded and rarely appears. I cannot promise that I'll be able to do anything, you'd better be mentally prepared for a failure. There was the sound of a door opening from Dr. Gao's side, he was rushing out of his home. Only the youngest persona will have the answer to what I need to know. Dr. Gao, no matter what, you have to wake him up. The slamming of the door came from behind him and through the phone, Dr. Gao could hear it clearly. I'll try my best. He knew Chen Gu through Gao Ru Shui. Initially, he had treated Chen Gu as someone who liked psychology, but when Chen Gu volunteered to cure Wang Xian and Men Nan, his impression of the young man improved greatly, and at the same time, he gained many new questions about the man. Especially that night, he saw something questionable at Hai Ming Apartments, but he had not told anyone. He kept it inside his heart, attempting to find the answer himself. The phone stayed connected, and as Dr. Gao drove toward the hospital Men Nan was at, Chin Gu tried to hold the door behind him shut. About three minutes later, the door slamming did not end, and to make matters worse, the sound of gears unlocking came from room 8, which was not far away from Chin Gu. The room had a reinforced door, and it slowly opened to a slit. A face that was uneven on both sides looked out. He extended his neck and came out of the room wearing a doctor's garb. The man was hiding inside the sick room. Chen Gu had tried opening the door earlier, but he had failed. Now that he thought about it, it was probably the twisted face who did something to the door. The doctor Skullcracker's hammer leaned against room 3's door, and he only had access to the cleaver. Chin Gu looked at the twisted face and was considering pushing him into the door as well. I wonder what will happen to living person if trapped behind the door. If he dares to attack me, he'll be the perfect candidate to experiment on. The more dangerous it was, the calmer Chin Gu became. He held the cleaver and adjusted the position of the hammer. He formed a barricade using the hammer so that even if he left the door, the door would not be opened instantly. After midnight, there were some chances to the man's twisted face. His expression was more insane, and he slowly strode toward Chen Gu empty-handed. Something's not right. Chen Gu noticed the problem instantly. When the man was at the second sick hall, he had run without a second thought even though he had the axe, 
but after entering the third sick hall, he dared approach Chen Gu, who had both a cleaver and a hammer, empty-handed. The white cat hissed dangerously. When Chen Gu was fighting with the nurse, it had jumped down from Chen Ji's shoulder, and now it was gnashing its teeth at the twisted face. Facing the cat and the man, the twisted face's expression was completely different from before. His face that seemed to have undergone surgery revealed an ugly smile. He walked slower and slower with each step like there was something heavy on his shoulders, and every step was a painful ordeal for the man. His pose is similar to Wang Shenglong's. With the cleaver before his chest, the thing that Chen Gu did not wish to see the most appeared. The twisted face's lips cracked open even more, and a second head appeared behind his shoulders. It was just a normal head, but like a person standing up, a thin monster that was about 2.5 meters long extended out from the twisted face's back. The monster's lower body was connected to the twisted face's back, and the monster touched the ceiling easily. It then curved forward, like a human-headed cobra heading toward Chen Gu. What is this? Even though he was prepared, when Chen Gu saw the monster, he was still quite shocked. The monster was thin and long, wearing a large white cloth that was sewn together. Through the open patches, Chen Gu could see several human faces that were silent and drawn. At the beginning, the monster was probably not that tall, but after jumping onto people's shoulders and consuming them, it finally grew to this height. Chen Gu realized something. Wang Xinglong had once used a painting to describe his relationship with a monster. In the painting, he had been at the bottom, and the monster was stepping on his shoulders. The twisted face and the monster before Chen Gu shared a different relationship. The monster came directly out of the man's back. Is the twisted face the monster itself, or have they achieved some kind of mutually beneficial relationship? There was no time to think because even though the twisted face stopped at two meters away from Chen Gu, the long monster on his back had already reached the top of Chen Ji's skull. The monster's face was extremely common, it was the kind that would be forgotten easily, but who would have thought that such a common face hid a gruesome monster? Let's play a game. If you win, I'll let you go, but if you lose, you'll give me your body. The monster and the twisted face's lips moved at the same time, and the voice appeared in Chen Ji's mind. The game's name is called Who Speaks First. Dot. This was a game that the player was destined to lose because there was no time limit. Wang Xinglong was the perfect example. After agreeing to the game, the monster would climb onto the player's back and start the torment. If the player lost their conviction and spoke, the monster would win, but even if they did not, the monster would continue to squat on their shoulders, and the game would never end. The human faces that Chen Gu saw through the patches were probably the monster's victims. If you want to play a game, sure, but you'll need to edit the rules, Chen Gu said in a calm tone. Dr. Gao was rushing to the hospital, so he was buying time for himself. The monster stopped above Chen Ji's head. It was about half a meter away, and it took in a slight breath because it had not experienced this situation before. After a moment's pause, it turned to look at the twisted face, as if asking for his opinion. Shouldn't a normal person be screaming by now? The smile froze on the twisted face. He assumed that Chen Gu was toying with them so he pointed his finger at Chen Ji's head. The monster understood his meaning, it leaned downward, and a pair of shriveled hands reached out for Chen Ji's face, its body still extending. Chen Gu saw the monster approaching, but he did not lose his cool, if anything, his mind was working clearer than before. This is the monster's weakness. When he tried to attack me, it only moved its upper body, and its lower body was still stuck to the twisted face. This means that it probably cannot move its lower body easily. No wonder it wants to play this game with people. If it could just jump on people's shoulders to take over their body, it wouldn't need to draw people in with the pretext of playing a game. Chen Gu took a step back, but his eyes were glowing. When it moves from one body to the next, that is probably when it is the weakest. Chapter 175, The Last Trump Card Chen Gu Kept Evading but he was eventually cornered by the monster. Wait. I agree to play the game with you. Facing certain death, Chen Gu surrendered. He pocketed his phone. Looking at the monster, he said, we'll do it your way. 
The change in Chen Jie's attitude made the twisted face suspicious, but the monster was just excited. Before the starting the game, you need to drop the cleaver. This was the first time Chen Gu had heard the man speak. He had a special voice, like his vocal cords had been operated on before, and it sounded sharp and shrill. If I win the game, you need to guarantee that I can leave this place safely. Chen Jie's eyes were filled with distrust. Seeing this, the twisted face felt more confident. Move away from the door, drop the knife, and after you win the game, I will tell you the exit. The game was a losing battle. If Chen Gu really agreed to it, his future would be a life of torture inside a dark mental hospital. Fine, I agree. What shall I do next? Chen Gu tossed the cleaver aside, but he made sure that the handle was facing him. He shoved both his hands into his pockets. Just stand where you are. The twisted face walked forward until he was two meters away from Chen Gu. From this moment on, no matter what you see or hear, you cannot make a sound or else you lose. He stared at Chen Gu while the monster on his back continued to extend until the very common face was hanging upside down before Chen Gu. Still not speaking? Then how about something more exciting? Chen Gu sat down and bent over. The monster completely extricated itself from his back. The monster as three meters tall. Its legs were less than one meter long, and his limbs were the size of normal people. However, its body was long, like it was attached together from the bodies of many different people. What in the world is this? The monster was so tall that it had a hard time maintaining its balance as it wiggled its way toward Chen Gu. There were only two meters between them. The monster's upper body hung above Chen Gu while its lower body slowly climbed toward him. As if afraid that Chen Gu might regret his decision, its spindly hands gripped Chen Ji's shoulders to prevent him from running. Chen Gu was rather nervous as the creature walked toward him. He repeated the plan in his mind multiple times as he kept his eyes on the monster's legs. When the legs were next to the cleaver, Chen Ji's hand inside his pocket suddenly pulled out. There was something he had that would definitely cause damage on the monster. The sharp tip of the pen stuck into the monster's eye. The force caused the pen that was taped together to shatter immediately. The pen was stuck inside the monster's eye socket, and its body wiggled like a snake. Obviously, it was damaged. In High Ming apartments, Chen Gu had accidentally thrown Xiao Xiao at the mirror monster, and the doll had taken a bite out of the monster's body. It was then that Chen Gu realized other ghosts were the most effective method to harm ghosts. Using the pen spirit's ballpoint pen was part of his plan. When the monster was screaming from pain, Chen Gu yanked out the pen and rushed forward. He acted very fast. When the twisted face realized what was happening, Chen Gu already held the cleaver in his hand. When he tossed the knife, he had already planned everything. He knew that even if he placed the handle toward himself, the twisted face would not have noticed it considering how dark the corridor was. Feeling the weight of the cleaver in his hands, Chen Gu aimed it at the monster's weakness, its legs. He had suffered a lot that night, and that cut contained all the negative emotions that Chen Gu wanted to vent. With every cut, the monster's body dwindled. The effect of the cleaver is still too weak to completely demolish this monster. When it recovers, the situation will still be unfavorable for me. Chen Gu soon calmed down from his battle rage. The cleaver cannot hurt the monster, but it can definitely incapacitate the person who it relies on. With the cleaver in his hands, Chen Gu whipped his head around to glare at the twisted face. What is the meaning of this? The twisted face broke out in cold sweat. For some reason, he felt like history was about to repeat itself. You're dead meat. Chen Gu ran at him with the cleaver raised. The twisted face turned around and dashed toward the stairs. The twisted face ran for his life, and Chen Gu chased after him with the cleaver glinting dangerously in the dark. Behind them, the monster who was poked blind slithered like a snake on the floor as it tried to catch up to its prey. The three formed a curious sort of balance as they ran from the first floor to the fourth. After entering the fourth floor corridor, Chen Gu slowed down. He realized that the twisted face seemed to be purposely leading him this way. When they ran up the other floor, 
the twisted face did not even hesitate. He just shot up the stairs to the fourth floor. He wants to escape to the other sick halls. Impossible, he can only control the monster when he is inside the third sick hall. Chen Gu knew very well how unique the third sick hall was for these mental patients. They would not leave this place willingly for various reasons. Just as the twisted face was about to leave the third sick hall, he finally stopped. He screamed loudly until his face twisted even more. Hearing the man's screams, two other men climbed out of the rooms from the sides. They were both injured, and they were Su Tong and the patient with the phantom limb syndrome. If it was just the three of them, Chen Gu would not have been so afraid, but he could see the monsters slowly extending out from the two other men's backs. All the patients at Third Sick Hall are possessed by monsters? Their relationship should be more peaceful compared to Zhang Peng and the mirror monster. This is not a good sign for me. There were nine patients at Third Sick Hall, and after taking out Wang Xinglong, Chen Gu might need to face eight similar monsters that night. There might even be monsters that were scarier than these. The thin bodies snuck out from the patients' backs, and Chen Gu was surrounded by the three monsters. Don't be afraid, you'll soon be one of us. Twisted Face had the two patients block Chen Ji's way as he moved to lock the steel door that connected the second and third sick hall. Standing there, Chen Gu felt that all hope was lost. The three monsters had blocked all the exits, and they slowly inched closer to him. Chen Gu doubted that they would even give him the chance to commit suicide. A three-star scenario is still too tough for me. Chen Gu leaned against the wall and took out a candy with a crying face from his pocket. This is my last trump card. After using this, no matter what, I'll need to leave this place. Chen Gu popped the candy into his mouth, and instantly, he could feel endless resentment and coldness spread through his body. Long black hairs knocked into the walls like waves. An intensely wicked presence was awakening. Zhang Ya walked out of Chen Ji's shadow in red. Chapter 176, remember it the girl's face was even more ethereal, heightened by the red in her outfit. Her black hair fluttered in the wind. Zhang Ya stood before Chen Gu, with less than 30 centimeters between their faces. The chill seeped through his skin, and Chen Ji's lips turned purple from the cold. The man who was not afraid of anything felt fear curl around his heart. Instinctually, he wanted to lean backwards, but he found himself unable to move. The crying candle seemed to have melted into a flowing icy river, freezing every blood vessel in his body. There was a spirit crying for help surging through his body. The negative energy gathered around his heart like a pair of hands had clamped over it. The candy was hard to swallow, and Chen Gu felt like he was going to faint from a lack of air. Zhang Ya moved toward him slowly, radiating icy presence. She finally stopped before Chen Gu. That face without temperature, its beauty was enough to stop the breath in Chen Ji's throat. His throat could not make any sound, and the candy had melted. Chen Gu could feel a spirit surging within his body. Looking at Zhang Ya, who was just six centimeters away from him, his calves started to quiver involuntarily. This is not what I had in mind. Someone stop her. Perhaps the title of Spectre's favor did kick in because the monster that was blinded by Pen's spirit crawled toward him at full speed. The thin body slithered like a giant snake. Its bony hands gripped Chen Ji's shoulders, and its lower body arced like it was preparing to jump on Chen Ji's shoulder. The pain from his shoulders woke Chen Gu up from his fear induced trance. He turned around to look at the monster and gave him an appreciative look. Appreciation? This seemed to have offended the monster, and the head that hung high went mad. It had no intention of fighting Zhang Ya and chose a spot on Chen Ji's neck to bite. The twisted human head opened its jaw but stopped when it was half a meter away from Chen Gu. It was not that it wanted to stop, but it was forced to. In the dark, strings of bloody hair bound its body. The monster screamed and glared resentfully at Zhang Ya. It did not attack Zhang Ya earlier, but that did not mean that it was afraid of Zhang Ya. The three monsters communicated with each other, and they switched their target to Zhang Ya. Chen Gu did not know what Zhang Ya was about to do, but he saw the girl's face drop. The black hair drilled into the monster's body. 
Her slender arms gripped the monster's head and slammed it heavily against the wall. The monster wailed for the second time. The first time was when Chen Gu used the pen spirit to poke into its eye. This is so cruel. When Zhang Ya started battling the monster, the chilliness on Chen Gu decreased enough that he could move. He quickly moved backwards. The screaming of the spirit in his body weakened as the candy continued to dissolve. His eyes felt surrounded by coldness and his power of sight increased once more. He could see clearer in the dark. The three monsters tussled with Zhang Ya. Her red outfit blazed in the dark, signaling her burning anger and resentment. It appeared like she was going to tear the monsters apart and consume them. Ten minutes later, it was a slaughter inside the corridor. The monsters were increasingly wounded. When they were joined to humans, these thin monsters were the strongest, but when they were detached from their hosts, their power greatly weakened. Even though they had the advantage of numbers, they could not do anything to Zhang Ya. The difference in power is so huge. The thin monster was the scariest ghost Chen Gu had ever met. Initially, he had though this monster would be as powerful as Zhang Ya, but it looked like he had underestimated Zhang Ya. She is definitely unique to be able to have a personal page inside the black phone. Chen Gu gripped the cleaver, he did not dare let his guard down. At most, Western Jiujiang Private Academy was a three-star scenario, but Chen Gu believed it was only a two-star scenario. As the ghost from Western Jiujiang Private Academy, Zhang Ye could deal with the monsters from the three-star third sick hall easily. This could only mean one thing. There should be something scarier than the thin monster hiding inside the third sick hall. There has to be a reason why the black phone evaluates the third sick hall as a three-star scenario. There should also be a red specter inside the hospital and perhaps even more than one. The more Chen Gu thought about it, the more confused he became. The door had been left open for so many years already, so theoretically speaking, the whole hospital should have been a monster's den by now. Did all the ghosts leave, or did something happen to them after they left the world behind the door? Chen Gu looked around, and he realized the blood vessels that he saw on the first floor corridor had appeared on the fourth floor as well and they were moving silently toward Zhang Ya. This is bad. Chen Gu had regained full control of his body. The candy given by Zhang Ya was made from a human soul, and the effect of the candy froze his body. When the candy fully melted, the candy was absorbed by the Yin Yang vision. Zhang Ya did not mean to use this method to harm Chen Gu. There is something else hiding at the third sick hall. Maybe the real monster is the hall itself. Chen Gu ran forward, but he only took several steps before Dr. Gao's voice came from the phone in his pocket. Chen Gu. I've found Men Nan. The call had not been disconnected, so Dr. Gao knew things were urgent from what he heard. Okay, give him the phone. Chen Gu stopped moving. Men Nan was the key to this whole issue, he was the one who had seen the door and closed it before. This is Men Nan, thank you for helping me last time. Skip the formalities. I know there's a child persona hiding inside your mind, you should know how to wake him up. Chin Ji's situation was critical. The extremely scary thing inside the third sick hall was awakening due to Zhang Ya's appearance. You must be mistaken. What is this different persona you're talking about? He is inside you. Chin Gu raised his voice. You were raised inside a mental hospital. I don't how that influenced your growth, perhaps you are trying to avoid it, but some things cannot be avoided even if you pretend that they can. What are you talking about? Men Nan did not sound like he was lying. Perhaps I did grow up at a mental hospital, but who can remember things when they were a baby? A baby's synapses grow rapidly, and it might cause the instability in recorded memory. Therefore, many people cannot remember things when they were a baby, Dr. Gao explained from an objective perspective. But this doesn't mean that they've forgotten all about it. They were hidden deep inside one's mind. By evoking these memories, perhaps that childhood persona can be awakened. Evoking the memory? Chin Gu rummaged through his pocket and took out the picture he had found in the director's office. He snapped a picture of it and sent it to Dr. Gao. Men Nan, take a good look at this picture. This is the sick room your mother once stayed in. 
It is room three in the third sick hall. Focus on the door that sat between yourself and your mother. Chapter 177, He's Inside the Door, Door. Men Nan's voice had an audible change. He had been reminded of something. The picture that Chin Gu had sent, Men Nan also possessed, but his picture was placed at the bottom of a drawer under several books. When Chin Gu saw the picture at Hai Ming Apartments, he had been confused. This was the only picture Men Nan had of his mother, so he could not understand why he did not display it inside a photo frame. Instead, Men Nan hid it in a secluded corner like a memory that he refused to face. He did not want to throw it away but refused to face it. It was the conflict inside his heart. Where did you get this picture? Men Nan's voice croaked, and his tone slowed down. Chen Gu brought the thing that he was trying to hide up to the surface, so he could not run away anymore. I found the picture at the mental hospital. I've gone inside the room your mother stayed in. Leave that place immediately. Men Nan screamed before Chen Gu finished. Leave? Looks like you have remembered something. There was another period of silence on the phone. Several seconds later, Men Nan said, I don't why I said that, but my instincts told me that place is very dangerous. The mental hospital is locked, and I cannot leave. If it was not urgent, I wouldn't have called to disturb you. Holding the cleaver, Chen Gu saw the blood vessels were still inching toward Zhang Ya. This has gone beyond me and you. Those madmen who refuse treatment have returned to this place with their twisted ideologies. They have detained living humans and experimented with axes and saws. Can you imagine what else they might have done? There are victims in the hospital. Men Nan's voice was filled with uncertainty. He seemed to be doubting himself, like he wanted to say something but did not have the courage to. I can confirm one thing, there is more than one victim. I found plenty of evidence here that suggests there are multiple victims. Chen Gu did not know what Men Nan was hesitating about. I'm also in a dangerous situation. Monsters and patients are chasing me with axes. I cannot communicate with them. After a long time, Men Nan spoke. How do you expect me to help you? Awaken the other persona inside you. He's the one I'm looking for. The stench in the air intensified like a monster opening its maw. Can you tell me why? Men Nan's voice was soft, and it was filled with complicated emotions. Chen Gu did not have the time to play games with Men Nan, so he answered truthfully, I want to close the door of the third room at the third sick hall. Your childhood persona knows the way to close it. Awaken him. I know what happened to you when you were young. I understand and relate to your pain but you cannot run away from it forever. Close the door. Men Nan seemed to be talking to himself. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't help you. Chen Gu did not expect the brutal rejection from Men Nan. Why? Because he is not with me. Men Nan took a deep breath. He locked himself up behind the door. Your childhood persona is on the other side of the door. Chen Ji's brows were furrowed deeply. Yes. To be honest, he is the real main persona. My memory started only after four years old. Men Nan revealed this shocking information. The main persona was born at the mental hospital and saw the twisted as normal. His world is different from normal. Before four years old, he tried his best to fix his perspective, and his only pillar of support was his mother, but when he was four, his mother was murdered, and the persona, who saw everything, decided to give up on the normal world. Perhaps the normal world had never shown him any kindness, so he believed that the world that we reside in is the truly twisted one. He closed himself up in his psyche, and then I appeared. He did not communicate with me until the day the director from the mental hospital and a Dr. Chin came to find me. They pleaded for my help to close this door. At the time, I was so small and without knowing anything, they brought me back to the mental hospital where the main persona once spent his childhood. They asked me many questions, questions that now I cannot answer. That night, they arranged for me to sleep inside room 3, and I don't know what happened next. There were probably sleeping pills in the water because I slumbered so deeply, and it was probably then that they summoned the main persona. When I woke up, 
it was already midnight. I opened my eyes blurly and saw myself lying in bed, but everything around me was blood red. However, the strangest thing was that the main persona was standing beside me. He told me to keep this a secret from everyone and pointed at the clock on the outside corridor. He told me to keep myself awake no matter how tired I was. Then he sent me out of the room. He stayed behind the door and closed it. After that, he stopped appearing, but there are sometimes memories that don't belong to me that appear in my consciousness. I plan to carry these secrets with me to my grave because, even now, I'm unsure if these are just hallucinations. My situation is very similar to schizophrenia, but everything seems so real. I grew up in a state of constant self-doubt, and it is the main reason I chose to study psychology. There was great pain in Men Nan's voice, and Chin Gu, as an outsider, understood his pain. To pretend to be a normal person and live a normal life was something of a challenge to the young man. This explains why he was unable to resist the mirror ghost. Chin Gu held the phone, and his heart was quivering with anxiety. Men Nan should be telling the truth. When I detected the third persona inside his psyche, it did appear like shattered memories because the occurrences were very episodic and randomized. Dr. Gao took the phone from Men Nan. He did not understand the conversation between Men Nan and Chin Gu, so he could not be much help. Yes, he should be telling the truth. The only person who could close the door had spent the last decade or so inside the door, and the door had been closed for that long. It was not until the hospital closed five years ago that the door opened again. Could the real men Nan inside the door have gotten into some accident? Chin Gu wanted to retreat. This building was too wicked. Even with Zhang Ya, he did not feel that safe. It's safer to retreat. He turned to look at the corridor. The draft fluttered Zhang Ya's red outfit. The black hair that melted into the night poked through the monster's bodies repeatedly. Of the three monsters, two were already torn apart. Chapter 178, The Chase Black Snow Seemed to Be Falling in the Corridor Zhang Ya stood in the midst of it as her black hair absorbed the energy from the torn apart thin monsters, and the red on her clothes burned even brighter. She has gotten even stronger. Chen Ji's eyes twitched. Zhang Ya's affection level toward him was increasing at lightning speed. What if they broke through a certain level and Zhang Ya accidentally killed him? This girl, who looked cute and quiet, had a penchant for torturing her victims. If there was a seat open for the worst villain in this story, she would be a good candidate. We'd better leave the third sick hall soon. Chen Gu walked toward Zhang Ya to try to get her to leave. Of the three monsters, only the one who was blinded remained. It was heavily wounded, and the faces on its body were screaming for help. Even Chen Gu could not help but feel sorry for the helpless creature. Zhang Ya, it has received enough punishment. Stop torturing it, and just end its life. We're in a hurry, and I don't plan to stay at this place for long. Blood streamed out like tears from the monster's only functional eye. It tried its best to struggle from the bind of the black hairs. The faces on its body started to scream shrilly. It's calling for help? Just leave it be then, let's go. Chin Gu walked a few steps and realized that Zhang Ya was still standing where she was, her black hair slowly curling around the monster's feet. At the other end of the corridor, endless pulsing blood vessels seemed to reach into the monster's body like they were trying to rescue it. The stench in the air turned heavier. While Zhang Ya was fighting with the blood vessels, the real monster at Third Sick Hall was awakening. More blood vessels poked out from the walls and ceiling. Part of them wrapped around the monster's upper body while the rest crept toward Zhang Ya. What is the thing that is controlling these blood streaks? Chen Gu tried to go and help Zhang Ya, but before he got near, the thin monster was torn into two. Most of the body parts were wrapped up by the blood vessels and carried downstairs. Zhang Ya only got a small part of it. This was the first time Zhang Ya had lost, but from how Chen Gu saw it, they were lucky they kept their lives. He was about to advise Zhang Ya to leave, but before he could say anything, he saw the black hair come out of Zhang Ya's back like waves, and that flash of red rushed down the stairs. The blood vessels along the way were torn apart, and Zhang Ya soon disappeared down the fourth-floor corridor. 
A cold draft blew into Chen Ji's open mouth, and he said after two seconds, she still wants to give chase. Chen Gu looked at the dark corridor, and various scary images crowded his mind. His rationality told him it was time to leave, things had gone beyond his expectations. Retreat was the wise solution. He wanted to leave, but Zhang Ya had rushed forward alone. In fact, she might be tricked into enter the blood door. It was a dangerous world on the other side of the door, and Zhang Ya might be outnumbered. The more he thought about it, the more scared he became. Chen Gu slashed the cleaver on the wall, yelling, What am I doing? Then, he gritted his teeth and rushed into the darkness. Sitting beside a bloated mattress, the white cat's eyes were filled with confusion. This man said one thing but did another, his body even ran faster than earlier. Chen Gu ran from fourth floor to second floor, but he still did not see Zhang Ya. More blood spots appeared on the walls, and it looked scary. All the blood streaks along the third and fourth floor were taken care of, but only some are destroyed on this floor, so Zhang Ya probably stopped here. Chen Gu did not see Zhang Ya on the second floor, and Chen Gu went down to the first floor. The blood red corridor was empty. Chen Gu stepped into it cautiously. Don't tell me. Zhang Ya has already entered the blood door? He walked to room 3, and the originally closed door was now fully open. Obviously, someone had gone through the door. Chen Gu picked up Dr. Skullcracker's hammer that was lying on the floor. He glanced inside his backpack. The cock was already dead, and it had died without even making a noise. Wait outside or walk in to look for her. There was no sound from the other side of the door, and Chen Gu hesitated. He would not necessarily be able to handle the dangers that were inside the door, but if something happened to Zhang Ya inside the door, Chen Gu would not be able to escape even if he stayed outside the door. Holding the doorknob, Chen Ji's fingers were twitching. He took a deep breath and removed the almost shattered ballpoint pen from his pocket. It's already a new day, I want to use my fortune-telling chance. Chen Gu straightened the pen above the brown mattress. Pen spirit, is there a way for me to save myself and Zhang Ya? Without any hesitation, Pen Spirit wrote down three words on the mattress, enter the door. Isn't that a bit too fast? Don't you need to think about it? Chen Gu pocketed the pen. He looked at the door and made his decision. He took out his phone. There was only a small amount of battery left. He called Men Nan to ask, didn't you say some mysterious memories would appear inside you mind? Are there any blood-red scenarios among those memories? There are. Try to focus on those memories, and tell me, is there anything I should pay attention to regarding these blood-red scenarios? Chen Gu could not just leave Zhang Ya behind. He was in too deep, and he would need Zhang Ya's help in the future. He could not lose her. The extra memories are rarely related to blood-red, and even when they are, they seem to happen inside a similar scenario. Men Nan thought about it. It is a fully enclosed room, there are no windows and only one door. The space is small and has a wooden bed. There are binders attached to the bed, and there are machines next to it. It looks like an electroshock therapy room. Electroshock therapy? Yes, in the memory, various monsters entered the room. They twisted the binders around the bed, and then they conversed with each other as if saying, don't wake it up. Thinking about these things seemed to put extra pressure on Men Nan's head. His tone sounded pained. I couldn't see the monsters closely, but I do know one of them seems to have a broken face and the monster mentioned a name, I think it was. Wu Fei. The broken face and Wu Fei were both patients at the third sick hall. They respectively took up residence in room 10 and room 9. They were the most dangerous presences at this hospital. Is there anything else? Chin Gu stood at the door. There's something, but I'm not sure whether it will be useful or not. Ten years ago, I remember the main persona telling me that if I needed to find him one day, after entering the blood red door, I should not speak. Okay, thank you. Chin Gu zipped his mouth shut, placed the phone in his pocket, grabbed the hammer and cleaver, and stepped into the door. Chapter 179 Main persona breathing became difficult like he had walked into a thick fog. 
He felt moisture on his skin, and everything had a sheen of red to it. This is the world behind the door. Chen Gu remembered Men Nan's advice. He kept his mouth shut, and with the cleaver and hammer in his hands, he looked around. The walls, ceiling, and decorations in room 3 were identical to the one in the real world. He turned around, and what he saw made his heart race. The door of room 3 was open, but the scene outside the corridor did not reflect what it was in the real world. The difference was drastic, it was a corridor without any trash, clean and well kept. The mattresses and dolls that littered the floor were nowhere to be seen, and it felt like there were cleaners who cleaned the place every day. Chen Gu nudged toward the door carefully. He reached his arm out, and his arm did not disappear, the door appeared to only work one way. Since he had been warned to not speak, Chen Gu could not call Zhang Ya. Bracing himself, he walked out of room 3, and as he stepped out, he ran into something on the corridor. It was not a monster as he expected, not a zombie or a dead body, but a doll made from bed sheets and pillows. And there was more than one. They stood along the corridor like scarecrows. Their drawn expressions had a blank smile, and Chen Gu could not tell whether they were happy or sad. Why are there such things in the world beyond the door? Chen Gu assumed that the dolls buried inside the mattresses were just a silly prank, but after seeing this, his opinion changed. The nurse would feed the patients their medicine every night. She even had a special notebook to record each patient's name and medical history. Most crucially, all these patients had died in the real world, so these dolls probably carried their lingering spirit. Lingering spirits were a lot weaker than baleful specters but when the number of lingering spirits was at least ten times the baleful specters, the baleful specter might not win. When Chen Gu studied the doll, one of them seemed to sense him. Its head that was lowered suddenly raised, and its body turned. Its face that looked like it was drawn on by the hand of a child looked at Chen Gu, and Chen Gu started to sweat. The doll's body slowly moved, and Chen Gu raised the cleaver. The distance between the two closed, but the doll did not seem to pay Chen Gu any attention. With its wiggling gait, it walked to the other end of the corridor. It did not seem to have any purpose. It walked down the corridor aimlessly and stopped to lean against the wall when it was tired. It reminded Chen Gu of a mannequin puppet. Chen Gu had met many lingering spirit. The reason for their formation was a deep compulsion that they could not let go of. It caused them to remain in the real world. However, the lingering spirit inside the doll was completely different. It seemed to have lost its memory, or it had completely silenced its heart. Since the doll did not attack Chen Gu, there was no reason for him to provoke them. He slid silently out of room 3 and inspected the walls on the corridor. The wall had obvious scratch marks on it, they had probably been caused by Zhang Ya. Chen Gu followed the marks up to the second floor, and when he exited the stairwell, Chen Gu almost screamed from shock. Various dolls teetered on the second floor corridor. They wandered about aimlessly and paid no need to their surroundings. There was a great number of them, some of them were fallen on the floor with black scratch marks on them, a sign that Zhang Ya had passed through this way. Walking amid the tipsy dolls, Chen Gu had this weird sensation that perhaps he was the crazy one. If one was surrounded by mad people, would the normal one think he was the crazy one? The further he walked, the harder it was for Chen Gu to breathe. There was a heaviness on his body like he was being tossed into the ocean and s sinking. Thankfully, no one attacked him. Chen Gu successfully reached the end of the second floor corridor, and the scratch marks ended there. At the end of the corridor was a special room. Chen Gu had not had the time to examine it in real life before he was chased by the nurse to the first floor. This room that he had missed was the electroshock therapy room. After pushing it open, the scene that he saw surprised him. It was different from what he had expected. There was only one bed in the room, and a boy about five years old was tied to it. Chen Gu walked to the bed, and after comparing the picture, he was sure this was the young men Nan. A question surfaced in Chen Ji's mind. Why is he here? Based on the memory left in Men Nan's mind, Chen Gu had a bold speculation. An accident did happen to Men Nan's main persona inside the door, and it was because the door had lost its guardian that it started to go out of control. The scratch marks disappeared here, 
so this proved that she had been here before, but there was no sign of a struggle inside the room. Chen Gu had no idea where Zhang Ya had disappeared to, but since he had found Men Nan's main persona, he decided to rescue him first. Only by waking up the boy would he gain a new understanding of the world behind the door and perhaps a new helper. That was the ideal situation, but what would really happen, no one knew. Chen Gu could only hedge a bet on it going well. The cleaver slit opened the binders easily, and Chen Gu lightly nudged Men Nan's body. It was unknown whether the boy was caught in a deep sleep or unconscious. No matter how hard Chen Gu shook him, his eyes remained closed. He could not speak inside this blood world, so Chen Gu tried other methods to wake the boy up. He did not know what happened to the boy, and his brain tried to fill in the blanks. The culprit did not kill the boy but detained him inside the electroshock therapy room. This meant that the boy was still useful to the culprit, so they would not see any harm come to the boy. A crazy thought flashed across Chen Ji's mind. Chen Gu silently raised the cleaver. He moved the blade up and down several times. He narrowed his eyes at the space close to the boy's neck and waved the cleaver downwards. The blade did not make contact with the bed. When it was about two centimeters away, a hairy hand appeared to block Chen Ji's cleaver. Chen Gu had been paying full attention, but he still did not know where the arm came from. Chen Gu pulled the cleaver back and put some distance between them. Chen Gu saw the monster in its full form. It had no body, it was only a broken arm. The arm seemed to be protecting the boy. To try out this theory, Chen Gu unleashed another attack at the boy. His every slash was blocked by the arm, and as this repeated itself, the arm started to crack. Just as Chen Gu thought the arm was about to disappear, many other broken arms appeared from underneath the bed. The tussle between the two parties grew louder, and about ten seconds later, there was a slight twitch on the sleeping boy's face. Chapter 180 The World in His Eyes The Boy Is Waking Up Chen Gu had no idea how many broken arms were hiding under the bed, and there might be monsters outside the door as well. Chen Gu did not think it was wise to stay inside the room for too long. Risking the danger of being hurt by the arms, Chen Gu rushed into the fray and held the boy in the bed in his arms. He placed the blade on the boy's neck as he retreated to the wall, his eyes scanning the room. He did not know why these arms were stopping him from harming Men Nan. If they care about Men Nan's safety, why would they strap him to the bed? When he entered the door, the trial mission had gone out of control. Chen Gu did not know what would happen next, this was something he had not faced before. Tightening the grip on the cleaver, the only thing he could do then was wake Men Nan up. This boy was his only hope of surviving this ordeal. When the blade touched the boy's skin, the broken arms stopped attacking. Like being controlled, all of them bounced to the door to knock on it. The incessant knocking unsettled Chen Gu. He remembered Men Nan's order, so he had not said a word since entering the door. Even when he moved, he kept his footsteps as light as possible. The knocking was loud, and it reverberated down the corridor, shattering the peace that Chen Gu had tried so hard to maintain. A bad feeling appeared in Chen Ji's heart. He started to panic, but before he could do anything, a large senior appeared at the door of the electroshock therapy room. The old man was 1.8 meters tall, had a head full of white hair, and was wearing a doctor's coat. However, his coat was drenched with blood, it had turned fully red. Looking at the old man, two words flashed across Chen Ji's mind, Red Spectre. The warning from Men Nan was probably to avoid this thing, but since the monster had already appeared, there was no reason for Chen Gu to be cautious anymore. This is surprising. I didn't think that there would be others who could enter the door other than myself. The senior was kind and gentle. He looked very approachable if one could overlook the blood-soaked coat. This is not a place where you should be. Put the boy down and quickly leave. Chen Gu did not move. The boy was his only leverage, so he could not let that go so easily. The blade was pressed on the boy's neck. He stared at the senior at the door, and the longer he stared, the more frightened he felt. The senior's hands were slightly twisted, like they had been smashed by something heavy. The kind face also felt weird, 
it looked very deathlike as if it was a dead person's makeup. This man has been dead for a long time already. This was the conclusion Chen Gu came up with using his talent in mortician's makeup. Seeing how Chen Gu did not say anything, the senior took the first step into the room with an unchanged expression. Sensing his movement, Chen Gu pressed on the blade. The boy's eyes twitched like he could feel the pain. It felt like he was waking up. Don't hurt the boy. The senior stopped and said something curious. If something happens to the boy, you'll never be able to return. He snapped his fingers, and the broken arms all retreated under the bed. Chen Gu saw this and took a step away from the bed. You're so tense. Relax a bit. The senior's voice sounded convincing. Similar to Dr. Gao, he had the ability to make the other person relax and put their guard down during normal conversation. It was unclear whether this senior relied on psychological tactics or something else completely. In this place, the only one who can communicate with you is me, and only I can help you. Chen Gu did not reply. He raised the hammer with one hand and pointed at the door. You want to leave? The senior shook his head. You can leave at any time, but the boy cannot. He has to stay inside this room. The electroshock therapy room was the room at the hospital with the best soundproofing system. It was completely isolated. No one would have any idea what happened within. Being trapped by a red specter unsettled Chen Gu. He started to panic, and his arm flexed. The blade pressed down another few centimeters. The senior's face twitched, but he recovered quickly. I'm not threatening you. Just give me a chance to explain myself, then you can make your decision. You might not believe this, but we are living in this boy's nightmare. If something happens to him, or if he wakes up, we will forever be trapped here. Nightmare? This was the first time Chen Gu had spoken since he stepped into the door. He examined the senior's reaction closely, and after realizing that there was nothing wrong with his body, he relaxed slightly. Yes, the boy grew up in a mental hospital, and due to multiple reasons, he has developed a sickly worldview. What the senior said next touched Chen Gu. You must have seen the dolls made from pillows and bedsheets wandering the halls already. In the boy's eyes, they represented the patients who received treatment in the hospital. Dulled by the effect of medication, they slowly turned into lifeless dolls. They lost interest in everything and spent their days in a waking dream. This is all his imagination? Chen Gu looked at the bed. Then how do you explain the broken arms? They don't exist in real life. The arms hiding under the bed are the manifestation of the boy's fears. When he was very young, a doctor purposely scared him, saying there was a hairy arm hiding under every child's bed and if the child was naughty, the arm would come out at midnight to pull on the child's ankle and drag them into the darkness under the bed. Because of this story, the broken arms became a symbol of fear in the boy's nightmare, the senior explained. In this nightmare, there is also a thin monster that likes to stand on people's shoulders. They are a manifestation of desire. Their original size is similar to a normal man, but as they jump onto the shoulders of different individuals, they squeeze their host dry, and their body continues to grow. Human desire is bottomless, and when it grows beyond its limit, it turns harmful and ugly. There are many more similar examples. Everything in this world is a reflection of the boy's subconscious. Chen Gu could not tell whether the senior was lying or not. From his perspective, even this old man was not right in the head. I know it is hard to believe, but it is the truth. A human brain has 150 billion synapses, and 95% of them were untapped. If we compare a human brain to an iceberg, the large part that remains submerged is our subconscious. The adult brain is mature, but it is different for a baby. When a child is between 1 and 3, their brain is at its most active. It is also the time when the subconscious starts to form. If during this period, the child's mindset is continuously challenged and tested, then the subconscious will become highly active even to the point of supplementing the actual conscious mind. To be honest, Chen Gu did not really understand what the old man was saying, but he had a feeling that the senior was lying to him. He was trying to hide something.